Hi everyone. I want to talk to you today about um, doing pelvic floor contractions or Kegels during your pregnancy in order to strengthen your pelvic floor. Um, it's something that I hear a lot from both trainees and from various professionals who work it, uh, with uh, pregnant women um, and around birth. Um, so the kind of the conventional wisdom is you're pregnant, you need to strengthen your pelvic floor. Um, and I've also seen this come up in lots of books, things like what to expect when you're expecting. And I, I really, really disagree with this, um, with this approach. And more and more professionals are disagreeing with this approach. When we sort of discovered Kegels in the 1980s, this is absolutely what we were telling women they needed to do. Just do your pelvic floor contractions and strengthen your pelvic floor and everything will be fine. You'll have an easy birth and you'll recover more quickly um, postpartum. But this is actually a really, really oversimplified way of looking at things. And since we started talking about all of this, uh, we've actually learned an awful lot more um, about the pelvic floor and how it works in conjunction with the rest of the core musculature. So that includes the diaphragm and all of the abdominal muscles. Um, so first of all, um, just because you're pregnant doesn't necessarily mean you need to start doing tons and tons of pelvic floor contractions. Um, uh, the idea that we need to kind of strengthen our pelvic floor is a little bit misguided for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, I've already made a video about uh, a concept that I call um, uh, Goldilocks and the three pelvic floors. That there is such a thing as a weak pelvic floor that's too low in the pelvis. But there's also such a thing as a, as a hypertensive pelvic floor that's too high in the pelvis. And there's also such a thing as pelvic floor that's just right, right in the middle. And that's obviously our goal, is to have a pelvic floor that's just right. And if you don't have any pelvic floor problems, um, and, if you, and especially if you haven't had a baby before, it is likely that your pelvic floor is just fine. Um, and in fact, many, many women don't have um, uh, weak pelvic floors nowadays. They have hypertensive pelvic floors or hypertonic pelvic floors um, that, they, that they find really difficult to release. Um, so uh, the, 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 the important thing to understand here is that if your pelvic floor is absolutely fine and you start doing tons and tons and tons of pelvic floor contractions, the chances are is that you could, if, if you're doing them correctly, you could create um, a pelvic floor that's kind of hypertensive. Um, and, and, and we really don't want that. And we don't want that ever in life, a pelvic floor that's too tight. Um, but we also, we, we particularly don't want it during pregnancy um, because... You know, at the end of pregnancy, if we're hoping for a vaginal birth, we have to um, push a baby out through these muscles. So these muscles actually need to know how to relax fully. Um, we need to know how to take all the tone out of them. Um, it may be that actually expelling a baby is slightly more complex than that. It's not just about relaxation of the pelvic floor. But for our intents and purposes, we can think of it as like a full relaxation of the pelvic floor in order for it to fully stretch so that we can um, get a baby through it. And, and there is some concern that, and remember, this is a topic that we're still learning a lot about, but there is some concern that if a pelvic floor is too tight, um, this could actually uh, increase our chances of... of, of um, of tearing, um, or of needing a episiotomy, or of um, needing other interventions to help the baby come out. And, and it does make sense that if we can't relax the muscles around the pelvis, that this can be problematic for birth. And it's it's not difficult to understand the connection, um, the the connection between those two. Um, so. If your pelvic floor is fine, you most likely just need it need to leave it alone. And um, 
you may need to do some core training or pelvic floor training to help your body adjust to the increasing load on your pelvic floor as pregnancy progresses. But this looks a lot more complicated than just isolating the pelvic floor muscles and then isolating the core muscles, uh, maybe doing you know, some different like traditional ab work. This is unlikely to be helpful. And actually the best way of accessing um, the core musculature, musculature as a system um, can be through the breath, especially during pregnancy when all of these muscles are stretched out and in weird positions and there's, you know, all of our abdominal organs are being pushed out of the way. Um, so it may look like a much more kind of holistic, um, integrated approach rather than just isolating different muscles. Now, that's if you don't have problems. That's what that's 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 the thing. If you don't have problems, you don't. The, the major takeaway there is if you don't have pelvic floor issues, if you don't have any sign of a weak pelvic floor, you may not need to be doing strengthening exercises. Um, you may not. It just may not need strengthening. You just may need to keep it balanced as pregnancy progresses. What if you do have pelvic floor issues? If you do have pelvic floor issues like incontinence, you know, urinary incontinence, stress urinary incontinence, um, maybe you pee when you sneeze or uh, when you run or jump, um, maybe you have other types of incontinence, some, some women have frequent uh, urinary incontinence where it just kind of happens quite randomly, there's also fecal incontinence, there's, there's a lot of things that can be going on um, with the pelvic floor, lots of different types of incontinence. Um, uh, some women have more, um, uh, kind of less common um, variations of incontinence, a, a sort of um, needing to go to the toilet and then only peeing a bit and then when they go back to bed there's like a little bit of a leak of urine um, after they've been to the toilet and, and there's lots and lots and lots of different variations on this on this theme but basically if you're leaking urine when you're not supposed to or or feces when and that is actually a thing when you're not supposed to um, th this is a form of incontinence so if you have incontinence you have a weak pelvic floor right and you should do pelvic floor kegels uh, pelvic floor contractions well hang on not not necessarily for two reasons one um, pelvic floor um, issues like incontinence, they may not necessarily be a sign of a weak pelvic floor. They could be a hypertensive pelvic floor um, as, as well. So it's really important to get it checked out because by a professional, by a pelvic floor physiotherapist. I'm not a pelvic floor physiotherapist. Um, so it's, it's really important to um, go and see someone who specializes in this, who can assess your pelvic floor muscles along with your uh, with all of your core muscles and your diaphragm and and see what the problem is is it actually because of weak pelvic floor muscles or is it because of hypertent uh, hi hypertensive muscles uh, muscles that are too tight and this is what's causing the leaking or uh, whatever else and there are other variations of pelvic floor problems like prolapse that could be causing uh, the problem that could go hand in hand with a weak pelvic floor but they they may not this is really important to understand what the cause is because if you're leaking because your pelvic floor is too tight and so getting tired and then like giving way with impact or whatever else then you can understand why just self diagnosing and self treating it with with pelvic floor contractions could actually make things um, could actually make matters worse and if you're pregnant at this stage um, you, you really don't want to be messing around with it. You really want to go and see a pelvic floor physio, get diagnosed, understand what's going on, and, un and start learning about your body and what you need to do to rectify these issues. Um, there are also some signs of... Um, uh, oh, the, sorry, the second reason is that you may not be doing the pelvic floor contraction properly. So you really want to see uh, a pelvic floor physiotherapist who can check that you're doing them properly and that you're not sort of bearing down on your pelvic floor. So um, it could be that you don't actually have a weak pelvic floor. You have a tight pelvic floor that needs to release. Or it could be that you're not doing pelvic floor contractions um, 
properly um, and it's really important for a pelvic floor physio to assess that. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Um, oh, that's also the, there are some, I, because I'm not a pelvic floor physio and I've had to, um, and, and I do see a lot of women with pelvic floor issues that I then send them to a pelvic floor physio, um, I have come to um, anecdotally realize that there are certain um, uh, signs and symptoms of a weak or tight pelvic floor um, and and so just some clues that 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 indicate to me that it's more likely that someone has a tight hypertonic pelvic floor rather than a weak pelvic floor um, are things like pain any sort of pelvic pain or pain with sex or limited range of motion in the hips and in the pelvis uh, you know tight muscles um, in and around the pelvis um, uh, any of those kind of uh, signs, um, quite often things like constipation, um, you know, could be a sign if, you know, if she's having leaking problems and she suffers from constipation or from hemorrhoids. Um, these are things that kind of push me towards thinking that it's likely that someone has a tight pelvic floor. A woman who participates heavily in sports, um, uh, or if I look at her um, the, her abdominal muscles from the outside, her core muscles from the outside, and do an assessment of that, because obviously I can't do an assessment of pelvic floor muscles, um, sometimes women have really tight, hypertensive um, ab muscles, or really a, a really, really, really tight diaphragm. And uh, this kind of indicates to me that it's likely that she has uh, a, a, an overactive pelvic floor as well. Um, and, and another thing is just kind of like personality type, you know, you know uh, someone who, like me, who's a bit more uptight, who's not, um, who's not just sort of like super laid back, um, it's much more likely um, that she will have that she'll have a tendency towards hypertension rather than being, you know, too loose and, and whatever else. And, and that's highly anecdotal and, you know, I'm not, um, uh, I don't know if that's backed up by research, but I tend to get it right nine times out of ten, probably a little bit more than that. Um, so um, it can just give you an indication now from where you're sitting, but again, I can't emphasize this enough, any pelvic floor issues whatsoever, it's really important to go and get it sorted, to go and get it checked out by a professional. There are people who deal with this now, um, who, um, there are the, you know, professionals who are trained specifically in this and can help you deal with whatever problems um, you're having and their pelvic floor or women's health with women's health physiotherapists um so that's my message along with it just not being as simple it's not you're pregnant do your kegels you're pregnant do your pelvic floor strengthening exercises and thousands of books will tell you that thousands of courses and health professionals will tell you that so um really the aim is to also spread the word to um, not just women who are having babies and whatever else, but also to women who are working with women, professionals that are working with women who are having babies, that this is an oversimplified way of looking at it and we really need to be giving more individualized advice. So I really hope that's helpful. Um, as I said before, I've made similar um, posts and um, videos on this topic, but this is very specifically geared towards pregnancy. Um, if this was helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up and leave any questions below. Um, and if you think this could help um, a friend or a colleague, uh, please send this video on um, and we can sort of spread the word to more, to more women. Uh, thanks very much. Speak to you next time.